morning y'all so i figured i'd come on today and touch on a video real quick about baton placements so throughout uh different contracts baton placements were different spots it was uh in front behind your firearm and then on your opposite side of your firearm and then cross draw so i figured i'd touch on this real quick so when it comes to cross draw that's really the r most ridiculous thing ever because if you're dealing with a violent aggressor and you have to go to the extreme to use your uh, baton which should be after pepper spray for um at least that's the way i do it for escalation of force or use of force is verbal then i do pepper spray then i do hands-on then i do baton and then off to the last resort so think about this okay say this is my firearm and my firearm is on this side so i cross draw use this as a baton for example so i cross draw now my hand is preoccupied guess what violent aggressor violent attack chances for going to that extreme chances are i'm gonna need my firearm more than likely guess what cross draw my firearm hand is occupied leaving me to be able to do one and only one thing if I needed my firearm. That. Drop it. Leaving the baton open and accessible to the violent aggressor and others that can easily pick it up, whack me over the head with it. Therefore, I do not believe in cross draw for batons. Now, another way I was, I had to carry per policy and everything for one contract was in the front. So, get the message. So, now, carrying it in the front of you, in front of your mags, your mag pouch. Now, think of this, okay? You're dealing with a, an aggressor. You start having to tussle with them, all right? While you're tuss tussling with them, somebody, or not somebody, but the aggressor comes up, grabs it from you, because it's right there in the front, right there in the open. Guess what? Now who has control of your baton? The aggressor. Now another way I've been taught to uh, carry a baton is behind your firearm. Now, as I was taught when it comes to setting up your duty belt and everything from a law enforcement perspective is having what you're gonna use up front. That's what I've been taught, what I've been trained in for from a law enforcement perspective is like your pepper spray, obviously escalation of force, you're gonna use verbal commands, obviously the presence, obviously verbal commands, then you're gonna use spray. If you have a taser, which I don't have a taser, then a taser, if that's ineffective, then you use baton. If that's not effective, then obviously last resort. And obviously after you spray somebody, that's when you go hands on. You try to restrain them, tackle them, and do that, obviously. If that don't work, 
then you move forward. So cross draw for a baton is useless because you're gonna leave your weapon open and easy accessible for somebody to grab it, whack you upside the head with it. That's what happens when you cross draw because you, I always been taught for when it comes to cross draw, always on the opposite side of your firearm. So cross draw means you're gonna use your firearm hand and hold it, have it out. Like I said, it's all you can do. You're not gonna be able to sit there during a violent attack, be like, oh, hold on a second, let me shut it, let me put it in, in my holder. That's not gonna happen. So, the best thing, because at least for me, like, baton, I only used it for putting out a little brush fire along with breaking a window. That was it. Excuse me. Therefore, I prefer to have my baton be on my firearm because, really, that's going to be the most least used piece of equipment. Whereas pepper spray is going to be first, you know, so that's the best uh, position to have it is be on your firearm. Now, having it in front of you, which some contracts were, keep it in front. Get into a tussle with somebody, guess what? Somebody comes up, at, like whenever you're talking to somebody, you know, somebody goes to grab it easy accessible whereas from the back it's going to be harder because if you're trained properly you're not going to have somebody coming up from behind you and you're going to be paying attention to the subject along with your back so really cross draw is ridiculous asinine and and even the front now in front of you in front of your body that's also asinine to me personally. So best bet is to have it behind your firearm. That's just me though, cause really, I don't see the point in it, you know? So I prefer carrying it up front and cross drawn. You know, that's like yeah, having a flashlight, you know? Cause at least with a flashlight, you know, there's no immediate threat cause if there was an immediate threat, you're not going to pull out your flashlight. You know, if you carry that behind your firearm or on your strong side, that's reasonable because there's no threat. So you can take it, you know, if you're left or right-handed, you know, take your flashlight. You know, and easily go like that. You have more than enough time because there's no immediate threat 99% of the time. You know, so think about that. Whereas a baton, that only comes out whenever there's an immediate threat. So, just something to think of when it comes to baton placement. But, just figured I'd touch on that real quick. Y'all have a good day.